Hello and welcome to the Nerdy Things with Brendan channel. Today I have a little video of a book comparison versus the movie. So as a kid, I saw the movie Jumper because I loved Hayden Christensen in Star Wars. So when I saw the movie, I really enjoyed it. I wanted more. Of course, we never got a second movie or anything. But I recently found out it's based on a book series. So I had to check out the series myself. So I just finished the first book and I wanted to compare the book versus the movie just in case somebody else was thinking about reading the book. So if you like this video please like, I would greatly appreciate the subscribe, you'll get more videos like this and other stuff. So let's get into the comparison. So for reference the book Jumper was released in 1992 whereas the movie was released 16 years later in 2008. The movie tends to take place around 2008. It's really in an era before cell phones, so somewhere early 2000s. The book, I don't think ever really says a year, but it seems to take place in the mid-90s. Now in both the movie and the book, we have the main character of Davy, David Rice. Um, the book calls him Davy almost all the time. The movie went with David. I don't really know why. Maybe just to make him seem more adult-like. Davy's a little childish. But that's just one difference. The movie has Samuel L. Jackson playing the character Roland. However, Roland does not appear in the book at all. He, there is a character named Brian Cox who is an NSA agent though and kind of takes the role of Roland. However, Roland is the leader of the Paladins. And that's another difference that I will get to. So in the movie version of Jumper, we have Michael Rooker playing David's dad. This is way before Michael Rooker's days on The Walking Dead or as Yondu in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. However, the book, Dad is a main character almost. He's really the reason that David leaves the town of Stillwater. The dad is much more abusive. We see a lot more of him in the book. And throughout the book, David tries to help his dad his dad suffers from alcoholism, he's abusive, he beats Davy, and Davy really does want to help his dad despite all that. In the movie, Davy returns to his home in Stillwater and sees his dad maybe one or two times throughout the movie. However, in the book, he does it way more, and he even tries to reconcile with his dad near the end of the book. Another major difference between the book and the movie is the relationship between Millie and David and how they meet. In the movie, Millie and Davy both go to the same high school, they knew each other as kids, and Davy comes back years later and they reconnect. However, in the book, Davy is in New York, kind of just living his life after robbing a bank and he has some money, and he goes to see a fancy Broadway show and that's where he meets Millie, who was a college student at the time. Despite Millie being in college and Davy not, they still are dating and they try to meet up when they can. Now in the book, Davy and Millie meet about one third through the book, and there's way more build up of their relationship, they date for a while, and it takes a really long time before Davy reveals his powers to Millie. Another big difference between the movie and the book is there's no Griffin, whereas Griffin is a main character in the movie. In fact, there's no other jumpers in the book, and Davy's the only one. Now I touched on this a little bit in the last point, but the movie really has this kind of constant battle between the paladins and the jumpers and they're hunting them down. In the movie we see multiple jumpers haunted down by the paladins and even killed. However, the book has no paladins whatsoever. There's no other jumpers other than Davy. So this is an element that's completely original to the movie. Another big change they made for the movie is Davy's mom. In the movie, Davy's mom is actually one of the paladins, and that's why she left Davy as a child. However, in the book, Davy's mom is not a paladin. Like I said, there's no paladins, but she just left because the dad was abusive. In the book, it's revealed that Davy's mom feels quite upset about leaving Davy, and she really regrets it and wishes she would have brought him with him. So they have a moment in the book where they reconnect and they build a relationship once again. The movie did a pretty decent job of giving us details about Davy's teleporting abilities and how he's spending his life, but we get a lot more of this in the book. In the book, we see Davy testing his powers more and trying to understand them. He travels the world much more, and by the time we really get into the story, he has been all over the world. 
and he has these jump sites he's established. We also get more insight into how he lives, how he lives alone. He ran away from home as a teenager. So in the movie, we don't get much of this, but in the book, there's a real process of him getting an ID, trying to get his own place, trying to actually establish himself as a citizen, and there's a lot of challenges that come with that because he ran away from home. In the movie, after Davy and Millie reconnect after not seeing each other for years, Davy offers to take Millie to Rome and see the Colosseum and all these sites she wanted to see as an early teen. However, none of this happens in the book. Davy really doesn't even reveal his powers towards the end, and they travel very little. Now, just at the very beginning of the book, there's a huge difference that was completely left out of the movie, and that's Davy getting raped. Davy is trying to run away from home, and he meets a tractor trailer driver, who unfortunately tries to rape him, and that's how Davy discovers his ability to jump, and he jumps away to safety. In the book, you find out it's a group of truckers that have been doing this to multiple children, both boys and girls, for years, and Davy tries to put a stop to that. Now, truthfully, the rape scene right at the very beginning of the book is very startling. I don't know how much you really lost taking it out of the movie completely. I think it's enough motivation for Davy to jump and leave home just having an abusive dad. Um, so... You can really go either way with the rape. It definitely has some themes and some elements to it um, that are relevant to the story. But I don't think you lost anything in the movie removing that scene completely. In the book, since Davy's mom left him and his abusive father, she has now built a new life. We find out she is a flight attendant. And during the book, during one of the flights she's on, some terrorists take over the plane. And unfortunately, she gets blown up and it really scars Davy. This was completely left out of the movie. Now because of witnessing his mom blow up, Davy now uses his powers to save hostages in similar situations. In the book, Davy also uses his powers to stop an abusive cop from beating his wife. So in the book, there's this altruistic quality to Davy and he's trying to actually use his powers for good and helping others. We don't really see this in the movie. He only ever really uses his powers to save Millie, to save himself, and to just travel the world and really collect all these things. So you could say that the book version of Davy really is a hero and he does other things not just to help himself and we really lose this in the movie so it's almost like two different characters. Near the end of the movie it's revealed that Davy's mom had a daughter played by Kristen Stewart. However, in the book, this is not true. There's no sister, there's no other siblings. So it's a small difference, but one truly original to just the movie. So at the making of this video, I'm only 24, but I've read a decent amount of books, but never in my life have I really read a book that's so different from the movie. It's almost like two completely different things. That said though, there are some things that remained true from the book to the movie. We still have the Stillwater Library. This is really a safe haven for Davy. Whenever he feels unsafe, he likes to jump back to this place. In the movie, we got elements of an abusive dad, but we really didn't see too much of it. Now, another thing we have is Roland says he's NSA in the movie, but he's really not. So we have that NSA connection, but ultimately he's with the Paladins, which is not in the book. Another thing we also get is the Millie relationship. This is still fairly the same, however they don't meet in school, yet rather much later as almost adults. Both the book and the movie still have Davy committing a bank heist. Both versions also have Davy kind of living in luxury in a fancy apartment with all these things. Lastly, both the book and the movie have a desert safe house. However, in the book, the safe house in the desert is actually Davy's that he made himself. And in the movie, it's actually Griffin who establishes this desert safe house. Now, the movie likes to show Davy as fairly inexperienced, and Griffin as the experienced jumper with all these sights, a safe house, and he's been on the run from the Paladins for a while. The book sees a much more experienced Davy who really knows what he's doing, and he has these qualities of Griffin. And that really covers all the similarities and differences of the jumper book versus the movie. 
I hope this video wasn't too boring. If you liked it, subscribe. I read other books. I might get to more of these videos someday. Overall, I really enjoyed the Jumper book and I highly recommend it. If you're thinking about reading, it's probably worth the read. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.